All praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom Labacharium, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, which is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Bahashim, which means in the name of Yahweh Shai is the name of the only begotten Son, who was sent to deliver the children of Israel from their sins. Bashim Rakakwadash means in the name of the Holy Spirit, the volume of the book, the spirit of truth, Shalom Labacharium. Peace to the elect. That's the men, women, and children whose names are written in the book of life. All right, he was ordained to be delivered in these last days. All right. All right, Shalom, Shalom. Okay. So, this video, there's a lot of precepts, a lot of detail in this lesson in understanding the resurrection, understanding everlasting life. Understanding how the dead in Yahweh Shai is going to rise, okay, in these last days, okay. Now, when we start from the beginning, <clears throat> the scriptures tell you, right, John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with the powers, and the Word was the powers, right, because the Allah Hayim, Yahweh Shai, the, was all entailed in the making of the earth and framing the ordinances that were established from the beginning of the time of this time frame, of this age, of this time frame that we're in, of this, uh, of the making of the earth. You had Yahweh the Father, you had Yahweh Shai, you had the Allah Hayim, the powers, the angels, all right, along with Yahweh Shai, making the earth, okay? And that's what was explained in John 1 and 1, right? And when we go to Proverbs, the eighth chapter, all right, it explains that wisdom was there, okay? Which wisdom is what? That breath, all right, which we're going to get in all, we're going to get into these uh, points, later on in the video all right which you know what matter of fact let me go to that this thing is a uh, uh, many layers man you know let me get straight to the point on it all right this is a uh, john i'm sorry genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 in the in yahweh Power form man of the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Right? Because the formation of man was through the clay, all right, through the earth, through the, the ground, the waters. All right, when we have understanding on how man was formed. Okay. So Further, when you move further, what happened? The Most High breathed his breath into those souls, into those men. Okay? And on to who? The Adam. You know, the Adamites. The, uh, uh, the chosen line. The chosen lineage that was from the beginning of the world. Okay? So, that was the beginning with the, the word what happened? It was with the powers and the word was made of the powers. Okay. Like it says, let's go back to John chapter one. Okay. Bear with me. Salaki, bear with me. In the beginning was the word and the word was with the powers and the word was the powers. All right. Because there was a union between man and the heavenly father in the beginning of the world, in the beginning of the earth. As we know it today. All right. Through what? Through the marriage of the breath. Okay. Now. When you understand the attributes of the heavenly father. Yahweh. All right. When he does things spiritually. He manifests in the flesh. So that's why. When you see the word here. Was with the powers. All right. We jump down. It says what? Verse 14. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, meaning the firstborn, full of grace 
in truth. And we understand that this is talking about Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai is the word. Okay? This is the book of Revelation. Okay? Chapter 19 and verse 13. It says, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of the Most High. So the Most High started off with the breath, with the powers, okay? And the word was known back then, okay? But then what happened later on when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, the word was made flesh. So the reason I'm saying that is because the Most High deals in the spirit first, but then later on he manifests what he established in the spirit in the flesh. That's how he does things. Okay? So, when we go to Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, okay, it says, what? Let's start from verse 4. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord, Yahweh. Thus saith the Lord, your power, right, the most high, unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And we understand that this is talking about a spiritual synopsis. It's talking, it's allegoric, okay, Ezekiel 37. All right, remember, this is, now, this is, this is talking in the manner of the spirit, okay, so the Most High sanct sanctioned Ezekiel to prophesy so that what? The breath would enter into those bones. Enter into who? Verse 11, it says what? Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Right, because... When the spirit is down, then the bones are dry. Okay? Matter of fact, let me see something real quick. Proverbs chapter 17 and 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. So our people spiritually are broken. So therefore, they're, they're just dry bones. Meaning what? There's no sinews. There's no flesh. There's no life in our people. But because the spirit of prophecy, which is what? Yahweh Shai. Now we're able to be resurrected now. Spiritually being resurrected. Okay? Let me get, I'm going to go to two, two scriptures. This is the book of, we're going back to Revelation. Chapter 19, but we're going to go to verse 10. All right? And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Most High, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So the testimony of Yahweh Shai, meaning the attributes, the image of Yahweh Shai represents prophecy. Okay, so that's why those bones were able to live. Okay? Now, when Yahweh Shai, okay, was put up on the cross and he died and his blood was shed, that made allowance of the, of the first resurrection, okay? Because when you read in times past, all right, the elder Yahshua he went into <clears throat> the book of Hebrews, Okay, 
chapter 11, and when it spoke about Abraham, right? Abraham believed, right? By the verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive a foreign inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went by faith. He saw John in the land promise as in the strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had fountains, foundations, whose builder and maker is the Most High, meaning what? The children of Israel, right? Let's get to the point. Okay. Verse 11, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who have promised. Okay, let me get to the point. Right, verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thou see be called. Accounting, meaning what? When you see on the ESV version, he considered that the Most High was able even to raise him from the dead, from which figure, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Okay, so this was in the knowledge of our forefathers, the knowledge of resurrection, the knowledge of someone dying and coming back to life. Okay, the Sadducees didn't believe that they actually made quarrels and they started beefs with Yahweh Shai because of that doctrine, even though they were Israelites. And you're seeing that nowadays. Okay, with the non-believers, but then ultimately what you're denying your Yahweh Shai. Okay, so we see in times past, Abraham believed that. Let's look at some other individuals, all right, that actually believe in the resurrection. Okay, this is the book of, let's go to 2 Maccabees, okay. We're gonna go. Well, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go back to this momentarily. But we're gonna go to Second Maccabees chapter seven and fourteen, okay? Which you had these uh, seven sons with their mother, okay? That were tried by the Greeks and were told that they were gonna be put to death if they didn't eat the pork. But they didn't eat the pork. And what did they rely on as their comfort? Right. Keep that in mind as well, because this is the, understanding the resurrection is comfort. If you don't understand the resurrection, then you won't have comfort in these last days. OK, that is also a part of denying the flesh. All right, because what we see is just flesh and blood. Well, I'm going to get into that as well. Matter of fact, let me get that before I forget. All right. This is the. Uh, Book of, let's go to that real quick, and then I'm going to go back to 2 Maccabees. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, okay, in verse 7. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine. This is talking about who? Those that died. Those that died in the Lord at that. And in time of their visitation, they, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people, and their Lord shall reign over them. For, and, and their Lord shall reign forever. But the point is, is in their time of their visitation, they shall shine. Okay? Because what? The visitation represents when Yahweh Shah is on his return. Now let's go back. All right? Let's go back to 2 Maccabees chapter 7. Okay? In verse 14, so when he was ready to die, this is talking about one of the sons, he said, thus it is good being put to death by men to look for hope 
from the Most High to be raised up again by him. As for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection to life. You see? So this was in the minds of our people prior to Yahweh Shai coming on the scene to be resurrected. We showed that with Abraham and that was showing that with the, the seven sons that were persecuted for not eating pork. I'll give you one more example. All right, let's go to the 12th chapter. Second Maccabees chapter 12. And then we're going to go towards the end. All right, because Judas Maccabees made many wars, but then there was casualties amongst the wars of Israelites that were fighting along Judas Maccabees. And what happened was, verse 43, all right? Let me start at 42. No, 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 no. Let's start at verse 43. And when he had made a gathering throughout the company to the sum of 2,000 drachms of silver, he sent to Jerusalem to offer a sin offering, right? Doing therein very well and uh, honestly in that he was mindful of the resurrection, right? Because what happened was, my bad, right? Verse 39, let's start there. And upon that, the day following, as the use had been, Judas and his company came to take up the bodies of them that were slain and to bury them with their kinsmen in their father's graves. Now, under the coats of everyone that was slain, they found things consecrated to the idols of the Jamnites, which is forbidden by the Jews by law. Then every man saw that this was the cause whereof they were slain. All the men all men, therefore, praising the Lord, the righteous judge who had opened the things that were hid, betook themselves unto prayer and besought him that the sin committed might wholly be put out of remembrance. Besides, the noble Judas exhorted the people to keep themselves from sin, for as much as they saw before their eyes the things that came to pass for the sins of those that were slain. Okay? Bear with me. Stay with me. And when he had made a gathering throughout the company of the sum of 2,000 drachms of silver, he sent it to Jerusalem to offer a sin offering, doing therein very well and honestly, in that he was mindful of the resurrection. So he, they understood this, that if people would die, there was a potential, there was a... A chance they will be in, they, that they will be resurrected, meaning what they will come out of those graves. So look what happened. For if he had not hoped that they that were slain should have risen again, it had been superfluous and vain to pray for the dead. And also in that he perceived that there was great favor laid up for those that died godly. And it was a holy and good thought. Whereupon he made a reconciliation for the dead that they might be delivered from sin. Now, Judas made a, a offering for those that died, a sin offering. But we obviously know that there was no resurrection of these bodies. All right? These bodies didn't come out of their graves. Okay? These bodies didn't come back to life. All right? Abraham knew that he that could, that was possible the most high stopped him and it didn't it didn't occur right you see in the maccabees that they knew that they would if they would have died they would be resurrected judas maccabees believed that if he made a sin offering that it would cover their sins and that they would be uh, uh, raised from the dead so this is something our people knew which also goes into what reincarnation life after death okay so, with that being said, we understand that when Yahweh Shai, all right, was put up on a cross and he actually died, okay, this is when the fulfillment of this promise actually came to pass, okay? When we go to Matthew chapter 27 and verse 50, Yahweh Shai, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yield up the ghost. This is when you actually, Yahweh Shai put up on the cross on the day of the Passover. His spirit left his body. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Many bodies, not all of the saints. So we know this is talking about who? 
This is talking about the, the, the elect. This is talking about the righteous souls. All right? Just like in the time that's to come, what? The scriptures tell you that the dead shall rise first, which we're going to get into that. The dead, the dead in Yahweh Shai shall rise first. So this actual event that actually happened back during the time of Yahweh Shai's death, him giving up the ghost, and then the graves were open, is going to happen again. This is why we don't have anything to fear in these last days. If you truly understand the promise and you truly understand the covenant that is made between the heavenly father, his son, and the children of Israel, there's nothing to fear. And I'm getting into that. All right. It says, and the graves were opened and the many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into holy, into the holy city and appeared unto many. So these dead bodies that were in the graves came out of the graves and then they showed themselves unto particular people to show that they came out of the grave. This actually happened. Before I used to think that this was figurative, but now I truly understand it. The Spirit has revealed this unto me to truly understand what this is all about, what it truly represents. Because it actually goes into the spiritual concept of the prophesying and then what? The dry bones of Ezekiel coming together and being raised out of their graves. You see? Now, this is why I'm gonna show two, I'm gonna show two more reasons, probably. Probably a couple more, more than that. All right. But something I want to bring out why this is important. Okay. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm gonna start at verse 12. Now, if Yahweh Shai preached that he rose from the dead, how say among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Right? Because you had individuals, you had Israelites that didn't believe in the resurrection, that didn't believe in this concept, okay? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Yahweh Shai is not risen. So if you don't believe in the resurrection, you don't believe in this concept, then you don't believe that Yahweh Shai actually died and then actually rose and came out of the grave, Right? And therefore, you don't believe that your sins are covered, that that old man can be taken away, that you can't overcome the flesh. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Yahweh Shai, then is Yahweh Shai not risen? And if Yahweh Shai be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain? Yeah. And we are found false witnesses of the Most High because we have testified of the Most High that he raised up Yahweh Shai. Yeah, because you can't go out and teach that Yahweh Shai rose from the dead if you don't believe in this concept. You don't believe in this promise. You don't believe in this covenant. You don't believe in the marriage. Okay? Whom he raised not up. If so, be that the dead rise not. You see, let me read that again. Yet, yeah, verse 15, yeah, and we are found false witnesses of the Most High because we have testified of the Most High that he raised up the anointed, right? Because that's what we're teaching. But if we don't believe in this concept, then we're false witnesses whom he raised not up. If so, be that the dead rise not, you see, because the, as I've read earlier, the dead actually raised up back then when Yahweh Shai's spirit left his body. Verse 16, for if he, for if the dead rise not, then is not Yahweh Shai raised. Okay? So actually believing that those that died in Yahweh Shai is going to be raised, if you don't believe that, then you don't believe in the our testimony. You don't believe in the gospel. Okay? This is why we preach also too that the law is not our salvation. Because the law is a service of your own self. It's, 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 it's your own self-sacrifice. It's your own, you know, overcoming, if you will. The only overcoming that we have is the spirit of prophecy, which is through who? Yahweh Shai. Verse 17. And if Yahweh Shai be not raised, your faith is, in, is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Okay? 
then they also, which are fallen asleep in Yahweh Shai, are perished. Meaning what? They're not even going to get everlasting life. Meaning all the works that those individuals that came before us and preached Yahweh Shai, they did that in vain. If you don't, right? If you don't believe in this, this concept in all reality. All right? So something else I want to get. Which I keep quoting it. I probably should have got it earlier, but it's okay. First Corinth, I'm sorry, first, first Thessalonians chapter 4, and I'm gonna start at verse 14. For if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh Shai will the most high bring with him. So now now we're in the third level. All right. Now we're on the first you had the, the believing aspect of it, of the resurrection, all right? Abraham, the Maccabees, right? Then Yahweh Shai died on the cross, and then the dead actually rose with him. Now we're in this time now when you have those that are preaching Yahweh Shai and actually out there prophesying, right? Who actually died, who want to come back with Yahweh Shai. Again, this whole ceremony is happening all over again. Right? Verse 15 For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Right? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the Most High, and the dead in Yahweh Shai shall rise first. You see? Because this is the showing of the power of the spirit of life. Not we don't have power in the flesh. We don't have power in carnal ordinances. We have power in, though, in, in him that gave breath unto Adam. That resurrected Yahweh Shai from the dead. Okay? Verse 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, which is the chariots, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is the comforter, man. Understand, we, we, we sleep. All right, those that die in the Lord are, are the ones that are, are the, they just sleep, but the Most High is going to wake them up. In the last days. And it's the same thing with the faithful martyrs that's going to be in these last days too. All right? That died for the testament. Matter of fact, let me get that. Revelation 17 and 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, talking about America and the persecution of the true believers. And with the blood of the martyrs of Yahweh Shai. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So there's going to be more people that's going to die in the name of the Lord, but they're going to be resurrected. Okay. Let me matter of fact, let me go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, right? Because the scriptures say what? Verse 2: In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and their departure is taken for misery. And they're going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. Meaning what? Not be, They didn't really die. Right? And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For the Most High proved them and found them worthy for himself. Why? Because they stayed faithful. As gold in the furnace have he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in time of their visitation... They shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. You see? Because not only is that those that died in Yahweh Shai are going to be raised up, they're going to come back in their glory. Right? It says, they shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people and their Lord shall reign forever. Why? Because they're going to be raised up with him and they're going to be joint heirs in Yahweh Shai's kingdom. As well as those that don't die. That's why the scriptures tell you, Yahweh Shai said, there'll be some of you that stay here that shall not taste the death. 
But then you have the other ones that are going to die in the Lord, but they're going to be raised up in that last day. Okay? I got two more, and I'm going to close out. Right? So this is the book of... Isaiah chapter 26, and I'm going to start at verse 17. Like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery is in pain and cried out in her pangs, so have been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child, we have been in pain, we have as it were brought forth when we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust, for the dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Woo! Showing you, man. He said what? He said, they're, they're, thy dead men shall live together with my dead body. Oh, matter of fact, the scriptures tell you how Yahweh Shai is going to show forth that dead that body that he when he was up on the cross. The scriptures tell you that he's going to show forth that body. He's going to show forth the wounds. Okay. Let's go to Second Ezra, chapter two. All right, in verse sixteen, and those that be dead will I raise up from their places. And bring them out of the graves, for I have known my name in Israel, those valley of dry bones, man. All right, but the ones that's gonna actually have the breath, the ones that's gonna be actually raised up and actually live and be caught up in the heavens with Yahweh Shai is the elect. Fear not, thou mother of the children, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. For thy help will I send my servants. It's supposed to be Isaiah and Jeremiah after whose counsel I have sanctified, which is what? The spirit of prophecy, the spirit of Yahweh Shai, and prepare for thee 12 trees laden with diverse fruits. You see, that's talk, when you really go into it, that's the 12,000 from each tribe, all right, who possess the tree of life, all right, the spirit of hope, all right, the, uh, uh, who believe in the resurrection. Okay. Yeah, and it says it right. And as the many fountains flown with milk and honey, and seven mighty mountains whereupon there grow roses and lilies, whereby I will fill thy children with joy. So, in order to believe in the kingdom, you got to believe in this resurrection. You got to believe that even if you were to die, that you will be raised up in the last days with Yahweh Shai anyway. This is, I read that earlier in Thessalonians. This is the comforter. Okay, this is a part of our inheritance. This this is our inheritance. This is the covenant. This is the promise. And the likes of vocab, the likes of you non-believers, no one can stop this. And that's the beauty of it. And it's the power of it is going to be shown so much that he's going to actually physically raise the dead in the last days. The scriptures say we are more than conquerors, man. Not perils, not death, not distress. Hey, hey, that's why the hey Paul was raised from the dead, man. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. He said, I saw a man caught up from the third part of heaven. What is that? Uh 2 Corinthians 13. No, 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 no. 1 Corinthians 13. No. Is it 12? Give me one second. Man, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, or chapter 12, verse 2. Right? I knew a man in Yahweh Shai above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out the body I cannot tell. The most I know of such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man 
whether in the body or out the body, I cannot tell. The Most High knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is in is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory in mine infirmities. Why? Because he's telling the story of when he was in Thessalonica and he was raised from the dead. I think it's 17, Acts 17. Yeah, this is it. The base of sort. Ah. Ah, 14. Salakia. Right. Acts 14, I'm starting verse 18. And when these sayings uh, scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, Salaki, I said Thessalonica, who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas and Devery. Yo, two Devery, Salaki, Derby. All right. Hey, man, look, the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is real. We're coming into some strenuous times, and these things are going to happen again. Okay? So we don't have nothing to fear, man. Okay, the most high the scripture say, I'm not giving you the, uh, the, sp uh, 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 the spirit of fear, but of what? A sh sound mind. And this is how we're going to have that sound mind, Akim, Akwaf, by believing on Yahweh Shai, the spirit of life, believing on the word. Call Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwada, Shalom.